One of the really interesting things about the resurrection is that the empty tomb really convinced only one person. John, the Apostle John, was the only one who was convinced by the empty tomb. It said he saw and believed. Everybody else was confused or even kind of sad about the empty tomb. What convinced everyone else was the appearances of Jesus. When Jesus actually physically appeared to them and they saw him with their own eyes and saw that he was alive. And, and it's kind of cool to look at the different ways that Jesus appeared to, to the, the believers and, and what that meant for them along the way. And, and one of the more interesting ones is when Jesus appears to the Emmaus disciples. Now there were two disciples who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, which was about a seven mile walk. And they were talking about all the events that had happened the week before. Presumably they were coming from the Passover. And Jesus appears to them and walks with them, but they do not know that it's Jesus. They've been prevented from seeing who this actually was. And so he talks with them. And it says, one of the things that it says in that account is that Jesus opened the scriptures to them and showed them that all of these events that happened in Jerusalem to Jesus had to happen based on the Old Testament scriptures. When he says that he opened scriptures to them, it makes you wonder what exactly did Jesus talk about? And we won't know the answer to that question, question for sure, but we can go back into the Old Testament and say, here are the different scriptures that point ahead to Jesus and what Jesus had to do for us. And, and so there's a few that I want to point to today. And I want to point to a few that, that talk about a resurrection, or they, they show a resurrection of sorts. The first resurrection that happened in the Bible, that's recorded in the Bible, is at the time of Elijah, when Elijah raised the widow of Zarephath's son from the dead. And then there was Elisha, who raised the Shunammite's woman's son from the dead. And then there was the, the man who was thrown into Elisha's grave that Elisha raised from the dead. Those are the three resurrections that are talked about in the Old Testament. And then you fast forward to the New Testament and Jesus shows up and he starts raising people from the dead. Jairus' daughter, the widow's son at Nain, uh, Lazarus, Jesus raises these people from the dead because he is God and he has the power to raise people from the dead. He has the power over death. Which is really interesting then when you get to Luke chapter 20, verses 37 to 38, Jesus says this about the, the Old Testament, even further back to the time of Moses. But in the account of the bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise. For he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. For to him, all are alive. If you read through the Old Testament, especially the first five books of the Bible, God will identify himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we are right in thinking that that is God's way of identifying himself with his promise that he gave to Abraham. That all nations on the earth would be blessed through Abraham. And that was a promise that was passed on to Isaac and renewed to Jacob as well. And so when God called himself that, he was identifying himself with the promise. But Jesus is saying in this particular account in Luke, that him saying that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob also means he is not the God of the dead, but he is the God of the living. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob live on with him in heaven. God is the God who has promised that you too will one day rise because he is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. Jesus, just as Jesus rose from the dead, we too will rise from the dead. When we die, our souls will go to heaven to be with Jesus through faith in him and our bodies will go in the ground. But when Jesus comes back to judge the living and the dead, the dead will be raised. Those dead bodies will be raised and your soul and body will be rejoined and you will join Jesus forever in heaven. Jesus' bodily resurrection points ahead 
to our resurrection. That's what Paul talks about all through 1 Corinthians 15. And so we have hope, not just for this life, but for the life to come. That just as Jesus rose, one day we too will rise.